Hello, so you're typically used to simulating it in LT Spice first and then building the same circuit in LT Designer. That's double the work. What you can do is actually import your circuit from LT Spice into LT directly and then verify in simulation. So let's say you already built your circuit in LT Spice. You don't have to do a bunch of double work. Let me show you how to do that. So in Altium Designer, go and make sure you have your the right your right extensions. So click on your profile, extensions, and updates. Go to the purchase tab. Okay. In the purchase tab, they have a number of free options here. One of them is the LT Spice importer. It doesn't show up for me because I already installed it, but it'll show up for you. And then you can click on the down arrow to download and install it. So you want to do that for your LT Spice importer and also for mixed simulation, which I also already have installed. Once you download and install both of these extensions, you would get a prompt to restart LTM, close LTM and restart it. Okay. Once you've done that, you just go to the file import wizard, right? Then click next and you'll have this LT Spice design files option. It'll ask for the ASC file, that's the schematic, and the ASY file, that's your like library symbols. Go ahead and click next, and then we want our LT Spice design files. Now, if I go to LT Spice, go to File, Save As, and I'll save my project as, you know, I'll AMP Circuit. If you don't know how to build a circuit in LT Spice, and you're curious, by the way, just check out my video where I show you how to do that in LT Spice from scratch. Here, I'll store it in my LT Spice folder, op -amp circuit, click save. In LTM, I will click add for my LT Spice design files. And now I go to my op -amp circuit, click open, and it asks, do you want to continue adding this file? It says the library file voltage for design could not be found. All right, so we'll add those in the next step. What it's talking about is this voltage symbol. It has a library that it comes from called voltage. So you're going to get a lot of, of these prompts saying voltage, voltage, and res for resistors. And this is for each component it's going to do this for, which is a little annoying, but that's okay. Click cap uh, the library file for this file as well. Hit next and then we we will find the library files, click add. Where do you find those? Well, you need to go into the like app data hidden folder that LT Spice is in. So you'd go to this PC, C drive, users, Kirsch. And then you wanna go into this thing called backslash app data, hit enter. That gets you access to the secret folder here. Go into local, then LT Spice lib symbol or SYM. Now this is where all the library files are for your components. We need the cap library, the res library, that voltage library it was talking about G as well, just for safety measures and any other libraries you need, like diode for your application, for your situation, right? Go ahead and click open. We can add another library like the, we go and add here. It keeps us in the symbol library, which is convenient. Go into op amps and you could search for that op amp. So you say LTC, you know, zero six, six zero six, oh, wait, six zero nine zero dash five, click open. Now this is just for the schematic symbols, not the spice. Well, not the full spice files per se, but don't worry about that. Let's go ahead, click next. And then where do you want to output this project? I would give it its own folder, maybe call it app. And I'll say 70. Okay, hit next. Check mark all of those things just to make sure you catch all errors. Click finish. Now this project has been imported. It has its own schematic. You can go ahead and delete this transient simulation thing. Okay. 
So the next step is to attempt a simulation. Let's go to simulate simulation dashboard. We'll start the verification for the circuit. It ran the electrical rule checks, made sure the simulation models are good. Now, it's not actually going to work as expected, but I'll just show you. Go to, to preparation, click add for your voltage probe. We have a voltage probe attached here. We'll put it on the input and another voltage probe on out. Oop, I didn't put that on there, so I used the middle mouse button to click, drag, and zoom in. All right, there we go. Right mouse button to pan if you're new to Altium Designer. By the way, if you don't have Altium Designer, click the link in the description below to get a free trial to Altium. All right, so now for the V out, I'll change the color to hmm, maybe like a bright light blue and for V in an orange or something. For the analysis setup and run, I can set my transient from zero to 250 microseconds. I won't specify the step. Let's hit run. All right, this looks good. It takes into consideration our DC offset, which is around 1.25. So if I go to my schematic, see this DC offset right here, if I double click on it, the offset is 1.25, amplitude 1.3, 10 kilohertz. On my output though, not really getting what I was hoping for. So that's a bit of a problem. Hmm. What I would do is I would try to add like a spice model to this thing, but I need to go and locate the spice model and the LT spice model is a little weird when it comes to adding it to the circuit. So I'm gonna replace this with a generic operational amplifier from Altium. To do that, go to simulate and you can place simulation generic components. Altium is a rich library of components you can simulate with. And you just type in op app. I'll go with the one with the power terminals. Place it there and there you go. All right, now let's do a control W to start wiring this thing. So my positive terminal, I click on there. These are not perfectly aligned with the grid, but it'll still work. So, all right, make my connections here. Hit escape. Control S to save the circuit. Now I can go to tools, annotation, annotate schematic quietly to name my U1 properly. And then check this out. Let's go back to the simulation dashboard, hit run again, and voila. See that output, that V out. If I were to click on there, beautiful. It is hitting that 70 volts. I can click drag and zoom in if I want to. This is a bit choppy, so let's go back to the simulation dashboard, set our step size. I see a recommended step size of four micro. You can do that, you know, you, you typically would go with one tenth of the resolution on your simulation. So, you know what, let's go with, let's go with 0 0.1 micro. That's a pretty small step size, hit run. And that's a bit, that's a lot smoother. So you can right click and fit document to see the entire plot and waveform there. Okay. You can also set this to dotted and that's where you get into advanced things with LTM simulation, but that's how you import your circuit, all right? So this is pretty good. And if you want like say generic components that you can look up for instance, all you have to do is click, double click on this, right? You have your properties, or actually, you know, let's double click on a resistor. We have our properties for the resistor. Let's say we want a 16.9 kilo ohm resistor. And then we want to start turning this into a printed circuit board. Well, you can go to panels, manufacturer part search, and this will look up Octopart. Okay, Octopart is one of the best, maybe if, maybe if not the best, search engine for components. So what you do is go here, say, I want a 16.9, 16.9 kilo ohm resistor, right? Hit enter, and then you can choose, you can pick, choose and refuse from this list, you know? Okay, and then you can check out 
each of the resistors. See what works for your situation. Start downloading the models and whatnot. And then you can even right click and add supplier links and parameters to the specific part. You can save this to your workspace. You can place the component and start replacing. Hit the space bar. Start replacing your components in the schematic with the manufacturer part number component. Now, there's actually a better way to go from schematic to PCB. Let's say you don't want to go through all the tedious work of finding your manufacturer part numbers completely first. Well, there's a different way to use generic components that can be added to, uh, that can make a PCB without having to find out the manufacturer part numbers. So check out how to do that in the next video.